out from that. We saw that there was a challenge that she had in the midst of it. And so many times when we do have a challenge or when we find a challenge, it's easy to not push forward through the challenge. And it's so important that we learn not to just let, let things go, uh, whether that be you're in school, whether that be you're in a relationship, whether that be you're singing in front of a, an audience, um, whether that means you're having some spiritual challenges. But if there's anything that I've been learning the past several years, it's the importance of going through the challenge. But not just going through the challenge, embracing the challenge. Because if you pay attention to what Sister Davenport did, she said, just let the track play. Just let the track play. Meaning that she accepted the fact that there was a challenge at hand and we're not going to try to run from it. We're not going to uh, try to avoid the challenge, but I'll embrace the challenge and we'll still get through it in the end. And it was such a beautiful song and I'm just so grateful for uh, the, the selection that you gave and the fact that you pushed through it. Um, and, I, and, and because it just, even aside from just the blessing that we received because of it, there was a lesson in it. There was a lesson in it. And who knows if God allowed even that just to be a lesson or, or a reminder for us on this morning to push through whatever circumstances we might find ourselves in. Right? So, so continue pushing through that. And um, man, God has just been, been putting this particular message on my heart this week. Again, sometimes he's putting messages on my heart and he's not necessarily telling me exactly how it's going to work out when I deliver it, <laughs> you know? Um, but again, he's telling me, listen, push forward, right? Push forward. And it, it's so important what he has for us on this morning. And so we, they read the, uh, uh, Elder Brown, thankfully, read the, read the verses to us. I want to also read the verses from uh, the message translation um, just to hear it within a different context, or not a different context, but just in a different language, so to speak. So the first one we have is John chapter 11, verse 25. And here uh, I chose this verse that says, might see the fullness of your glory in our lives, even right now, Father God. Amen. Amen. And so, and so that was one of the main things that, that Christ preached, y'all, was that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he admonishes the disciples and saying, listen, I want you to help the world to understand also that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? But if you pay attention to what he does in, in, in Matthew, he, he, it's not just he wants them to go and preach this thing, but he also wants them to be able to do some things that give people the evidence that the kingdom is at hand. And so I think it, 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 I thought of you, Sister Brown, um, as I was thinking of this, because you are pursuing a degree in the area of medicine or in the area of health, right? And so I just believe that some of the things that God was talking about was heal the sick. And we know that ultimately the sick will eventually be healed, right, in the last day when Jesus eventually comes down. But he would also like for us to be able to heal the sick now. You see what I'm saying? Um, we, Brother Roy, Sister Williams, has a particular situation. And I believe that while one day God will ultimately set the captives free, he also wants us to be able to set the captives free now. You, you see what I'm saying? So, 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 so this is not just something that he just wants us to simply sit back and say, okay, one day God will bring everything into fruition. The fullness of God will be manifested onto this earth. But he said, listen, the power in us understanding and having a relationship with Jesus Christ is that we, can, we have access to the power that God, that, that God is. And because we have that access to that power, there are some things that are able to be, uh, uh, there are some things on earth that are able to be affected, but we have to make sure that we really, that we really believe and tap into what God has made available to us. And ultimately, he has, watch this. He has ultimately given us these things to do, and he wants us to do it, because at the end of the day, these things glorify who he is. That's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? And so, and so watch this. But, but, but his gain is also our gain. You see what I'm saying? So he is saying, listen, I want to make you powerful. 
I want you to be able to affect change in your own life and in the lives of the people around you because I'm doing something through it. I, I, when we do these things and when we live this way, because really it's a, it's a way of living, right? It's not just a matter of just things that we're doing, but it's a way of living. When, 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 we do these, when you do these things and when you live this way, more people will come to know who I am. And then they will begin to also believe and they will also begin to do. And then more people will begin to believe who I am because of what they're doing. And then it's going to continue building and manifesting itself. And so while we know that in the last days that the world itself, I, 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 one of my favorite, um, I think it was uh, uh, this, this particular pastor who said it, Pastor David Ashry. And while, you know, we understand that the world continues to get worse and worse and worse, sometimes we forget that the whole essence of the gospel is that Christians Right. Those who truly believe in God can continue to get better and better and better. Right. And so let's not just remember, I, 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 I talked about framing things from the positive. So sometimes we, we, we see the world getting worse and worse and worse and we concentrate on that, not understanding that while the worst world might be getting worse and worse and worse. God has designed things that we might be able to get better and better and better. Right. Through the power that 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 he has given unto us. And so and so that's just and really that is the whole essence of the sermon that we're going to go through on this morning. And so I've chosen to use John chapter 11 um, to, to, in essence, show how that principle worked in a real life situation and that it might be an example of how it can work in our lives. And so it starts off by saying that. There was a man that was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, right? How many of us know the story of Lazarus? Most of us know the story of Lazarus, right? All all of us in here know the story of Lazarus. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, even before I even um, get into that, there's something I want to point out. This story appears only in the book of John. I think I told this to you all before. You have four Gospels. The first three Gospels, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are considered the synoptic Gospels. Why? Because they are very similar in, in terms of their purpose, why they're being written, and the stories that they tell and even how they tell the stories. John's Gospel is significantly different, and technically even when we say John's Gospel, we, we don't specifically know, there's nothing in the text that specifically says that John wrote the Gospel, but because of other evidences, we believe that this Gospel is the one that, that John is the author of this Gospel, John the Apostle, right? And if you pay attention to how this is written, it's written with a little bit of a different um, uh, spirit of application. The first three Gospels, a lot of the times, are concerned with proving that God is this Messiah that was spoken about in the Old Testament, right? And so the focus of them is proving that, listen, all these things that the Old Testament spoke about, this is how Jesus is the fulfillment of that. John is not so much concerned with that in his writing. John is really concerned with uh, with a relationship with Jesus Christ, a love relationship. Right. John is concerned with with you seeing the, the, the closeness and the nearness of Jesus to you. Right. John is concerned with, Okay, we understand that Jesus was the fulfillment of all these different prophecies in the Old Testament. But what I really want you to understand and get to the point of is that uh, this Jesus is the word of God who was in close proximity to God, the father, and has now said chosen to come down and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right. So 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 this Jesus is no longer somebody who's afar off, but this Jesus is somebody who is near to you. Right. And, 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 and so because he is near to you, not only John is the one that tells us the story that, listen, no longer when Jesus all of a sudden came to the point and said, listen, I don't call you all servants anymore. I call you a friend. You see what I'm saying? So John is very much concerned. He, he says in John, um, you have the verse, let not your heart be troubled. You know, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. So 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 we see this essence of of John is the one who shows Jesus to just be this comforter. Right. To be this comforting spirit, uh, this 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 friend. Right. That we can have. And it's important because here we have this story 
And you have to understand that the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11 is dealing with somebody who is who Jesus calls a friend. Right. Jesus calls a friend. And that's going to be important for, for our understanding, because even Jesus's friend goes through some stuff. Even Jesus's friend goes through some stuff. And 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 because it's Jesus friend. Jesus even feels some type of way about the situation. And so Jesus, when your friend goes through something, it's different than when somebody that you don't know goes through something. But when your friend is going through something, right, there's another level of, of it, it. It's almost like you feel like you're going through it also. Correct. Right. So 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 this is his friend that is going through this particular challenge. His friend has become ill. All right. And so. I was reading a commentary, and it's important to understand this point. We know that we know what's about to happen. Lazarus is getting ready to die. And even so, Jesus understands that even though Lazarus is getting ready to die, even though Jesus can act to intervene immediately, Jesus' main concern is not even necessarily saving Lazarus' life at the moment. But his main concern, above all else, is still to do the will of his father, right? And so my question to you is, what is the particular will of the father in your current life right here, right now? What is something specific that God is asking you to do right here, right now? There's some good things that you can have, or, or there's some good things around you that you can have um, an effect on. There's some good things that you can accomplish in your life right here, right now. But there might be something specific that God is saying, listen, those things are good, and by all means, I want you to address those, but this is what I have for you in the immediate moment. This is how I want you to obey my will immediately. What is that in your, in your life? I don't, I, and, 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 and I pose that question for you to think about, um, not like I know exactly what he's asking for you to do right here, right now, but I know that there might be some things that he might be talking to me about right here, right now. Um, you know, whether that be about education, whether that be about a relationship, whether that be about your career, uh, whether that be about just your, 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 your family dynamics. Like, what is God asking you to do right here and right now? Okay? So, oh, let me go to, the, uh, go to the text. So, we're in John chapter 11. And if we work our way from, from the top of that, it says, um, so it says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in, the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm the, um, the wrong verse. Hold on one second. I'm in Matthew still. I need to be in Luke. I'm sorry, I need to be in John. All right, John chapter 11. So we start at the top. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany. Now we could even go into that of Bethany aspect, right? Because if you understand, Lazarus of Bethany, he's in Bethany, which is not really far from where Jesus is. All right? So imagine, Jesus could get to Lazarus almost immediately. Bethany is about, when I looked it up, is about a little less than two miles away from Jerusalem. Now, how long would it take for you to walk two miles? Right? Or if you wanted to run two miles, right? If you heard that your loved one was sick you just, and you didn't have access to a car, you just might run two miles. Now, watch this. Well, I wasn't even planning on getting on this, but thank you, Father, uh, 